What's missing from your modular rig? Is there a module that doesn't exist in the market, but does exist in your mind? So I got invited to perform a module on the spot concert that's happening a week from now. Module on the spot is an event in which musicians bring their own Eurac system and solely perform with it. That means no laptops allowed. And for this particular upcoming event, guitar pedals are not permitted either. The email also informed me that all of the musicians that I respect are coming, and my family members were tracked down and invited to attend. So the pressure's on. But this sounds like an exciting opportunity as well. I immediately replied with a big old yes and ran towards the studio to start rehearsing, only to realize that my modular rig is not performable on its own. When I got into the world of Eurex synth, my intent was to design custom controllers to perform great sounding modules. So that's why the rig on its own is missing a bunch. Obviously, there's no reverb, there's no module that can send quantized CVs to rings, also it would be nice to have a delay. And finally, bass synth is missing too. At this point, I'm starting to feel panicked. I don't have that much time to research modular synth forums to make sure that I order the right modules. Either way, I don't have too much on the budget at the moment to order like 5 modules. And I also need to make sure that I'm rehearsing plenty to put on a great performance so that I don't disappoint anybody. As the pressure became unbearable, it appeared. A module that has the potential to be exactly what I needed. This is Patch In It by Electrosmith. Let's see if it can save the day. Quick disclaimer, Electrosmith sent this module over, so this video is sponsored in that aspect. But I didn't ask anything more for this overview. Also, I'm going to be transparent and honest, so I'll talk about both the pros and cons. With all that being said, I'm extremely grateful for their support. Okay, let's begin. It wasn't technically a hyperbole when I said that this module is exactly what I needed. Patch in it can run custom programs that are written in Pure Data, Max Gen tilde, Arduino, and C++. For example, I can put together a delay Pure Data patcher and put it inside of this module. Once the patcher is embedded, I can control it with these knobs, CB and gate inputs, a button, and a toggle. This module also features stereo ins and outs, LED, one CB output, and SD card input. So I can potentially create a stereo delay module. The delay time and feedback could be controlled with CB inputs, and the knobs can be used as attenuators. So the goal is to fill in all the missing pieces of my modular rig with the patch in it. But first, I need to understand how to use it. The most logical first test is to make it beep. I need to install all the necessary software before I can begin. Then plug the USB and press these buttons. And after following this step in the terminal, I should be able to upload a pure data patcher into this module. The patcher simply consists of just a sign tone and the DAC tilde. So I should hear a beep. Cool. Okay, what's next? Well, I just realized that they provided an example patcher, so let's check it out. Alright, what's up with all these CTRL objects? I think these correspond to the hardware inputs, which are the CB inputs and knobs. It does say CB1 under this knob, so my guess is that knob number 1 corresponds to the control 1 object. And judging by how knobs 3 and 4 are connected to the gain of the oscillator like this, the output of control objects should be 0.0, .0 to 1.0. Okay, let's analyze the signal flow. Knob 1 controls the pitch of a sine tone. And knob 4 controls the volume of the right channel. Knob 3 also controls the volume, but the signal goes into another gain object. So this second gain object is used to create a short envelope that is activated by a gate. And it's using gate 1 input. Knob number 2 is mapped to both of the two CB outputs. CB out 1 is mapped to, well, CB out 1 right here, and CB out 2 is mapped to the LED. Okay, so this confirms that CB output is also 0.0, .0 to 1.0. Cool. Alright, let's put this patcher inside a patch in it and make sure that I understood it correctly. Let's start with knob 2. So as I turn it, the brightness of the LED should change. Yes. Okay, I'm gonna test the CB out as well. I'm gonna send the CB out into the VCA. So as I twist the knob, 
The volume of the white noise and also the LED brightness should both change at the same time. Knob 1 and knob 4 are working as expected. For the left channel, I need to use Tempe as a gate source in order to hear it. Cool. This example patcher didn't include any object to test the CB inputs. So let's just copy and paste this part of the patcher and replace the 1 with 5. I'm gonna map the CB from chance to the pitch. Perfect. Okay, I think I'm ready to start thinking about what patcher I need to create for the performance. I would like to include a pre-made reverb such as Rep3 tilde. Also, I'm gonna need to create a melody generator and map it to CB out. And that quantized pitch CB will be patched into rings. And I would like to apply a delay effect to that synth. Finally, I would like to have a synth bass that changes note every few measures. All the rhythmic patterns and clocking will be taken care of by Tempe. Alright, I'm just going to put the whole patcher together and hope for the best. Wish me luck! Okay, aside from few bumps on the road, I was able to embed the patcher successfully into patch in it. So what were the bumps on the road, you may ask? VCF tilde that I was gonna use for the bass didn't work, which I need to look more into in the future. While Rep3 tilde worked nicely, it was a bit too heavy. Patch in it does have a size limit, which I'll go over in more detail near the end of the video. I was able to use Rep2 tilde, which was much lighter and still sounded good enough. Aside from those, it was just a matter of being patient and going step by step, which I recommend you do as well. Alright, so let's listen to this thing in action. This patcher can play a repeating pattern of C, E, D, and A. These values correspond to those pitches as CV. And you can reference this tutorial to understand how I got the CV pitch values. I'll also include a supplementary text and diagram right here too. And I'll patch the CB out into Ring's pitch CB input. And the note changes every time gate 1 receives a trigger. So let's send a gate from Tempe. And the second clock from Tempe is patched into Ring's envelope. Okay, it's gonna sound very simplistic at first, but trust me, it'll get more interesting. So by making gate 2 of Tempe faster, we can achieve a ratcheting effect. Things get more interesting and fun when using Tempe's mod function. In short, these clock patterns are shuffled around every time this gate input is activated. By using a unique module, it's possible to get something fun even with just a simple pure data patcher. Alright, let's apply some reverb. So quickly, I'll explain how to add Rep2 tilde, which is the object that is not supported by HVCC. Simply just click Rep2 tilde and copy and paste what's inside of it like this. Then delete some unnecessary objects to save some space. Same thing applies to Rep3 tilde by the way. And for Rep2 tilde, change this value right here. And I mapped the reverb size to knob 2 like this. And knob number 4 is mapped to the dry and wet parameter. Let's talk about bass next. Upon pressing this button, Bass synth is activated, indicated by the LED turning on. Now, when gate input 2 is activated by Tempe's third clock, the bass will begin playing. From there, every time gate 2 is activated, the bass note will switch notes. When the button's pressed again, the bass will fade away. Okay, now we can talk about the delay effect. It's the most basic delay effect that you can create in pure data. 
which I go over more in this tutorial. So knob 3 controls the feedback amount, and the delay time is a bit more complex. So what I did is use the length of time between each clock trigger that's coming into gate 2 and using the division of that length for the delay time. For example, if the time between each clock trigger is 1000 milliseconds, the delay times can be 1000 milliseconds, 500 milliseconds, 333.333, 250, or so on and so forth. Therefore, the delay time will be rhythmically be in sync with 10-piece clock. The division of time is controlled by knob number 1. Finally, audio input 1, which is going to be used for rings, goes into the delay effect. And audio input 2 bypasses the delay, so morphaging will be going in here. All these sounds, including the bass, will go into the dry wet gain of the reverb. Finally, there's clip tilde at the end for safety. It also adds a nice touch of distortion when the music gets layered and dense. Alright, I'm ready to start rehearsing. And I'll show some excerpts to demonstrate how the music begins how it builds, the climax, and the ending. I'll upload the entire rehearsal as a separate video for anyone interested. Okay, let's start out the performance with just a morphogen. And we'll add rings into the mix. Change the delay parameters and rhythmic patterns. Let's add the bass. Let's turn on the mod function. Cool, we got a nice loop happening here. And let's make it dense for the climax. So yeah, this modular system is finally sounding at its best. Seriously, it was exhilarating to hear it come together when performing with it for the first time. Patching it in all honesty filled in the missing parts of the system and made it fun to perform. Success! So this module with a small HP did 5 different things at once and glued my system together. And this all happened in like a day or two. I can of course continue to build upon this. For example, instead of programming the melody and bass line in pure data, perhaps I can use the key step and play the notes into one of the CB inputs of patch init. Or I could simply start from scratch again. So there are two main ways that I could recommend this module. As I see from my own experience, Patch Init is a module that can potentially fulfill your very specific need 
as long as you have the imagination and enough programming experience to achieve it. So ask yourself, what's missing from your modular rig, no matter what size your system is? Is there a module that doesn't exist in the market but does exist in your mind? A module that is very specific to your current need. And can you program it and get something close to it? Then I recommend patch in it. And you don't need to have years of programming experience. I promise you that the patcher that I put together for this video isn't anything complex. It's something that you can learn in several weeks or a few months on YouTube. Also, we can use existing patchers that are provided by Electrosmith or Cycling74. See if there's an existing patcher or code that work perfectly as a module. Or you can simply have fun experimenting. For people with experience using Max, Pure Data, or C++, leverage your skills and make a custom module. Do you have the best sounding FM synth that you made with Max MSP Gen tilde? Well, turn it into a module that you can control with chance or maths. And it could be perfect for rapid prototyping a potential product as well. We can even start a community around patching it and share programs around. Okay, before I give my final verdict, what are some of the cons? First off, setting up the environment can be a bit daunting, but I'll make sure to create a tutorial in the near future. That being said, if you carefully follow these steps, you should be okay. And Daisy's forum is a great resource for troubleshooting. You can also ask me questions about it too. For me personally, I would much prefer to have one more CB output over an LED. And every time I want to upload a program, I do have to unscrew the module, flip it over, plug in the USB, press these buttons, and upload the code. That being said, it does encourage you to commit. This bit of inconvenience will prevent me from endless fine-tuning, which does tend to happen. Size limitation does exist, and it was something that I encountered and had to resolve. Though it was mainly the reverb taking most of the space. So I could buy a module like Qubits Aurora, which is also powered by Daisy. And one last thing is that the power cable is protruding out towards the right side. This becomes a bit of an issue if you want to place a module with depth, like this audio I.O. module, because the cable is going to push it away. It's not an issue if you place a module that is thin. For example, I can place Morphogen next to it just fine. Are any of the cons a deal breaker? For me personally, not at all. But I still wanted to inform you of my experience. Daisy Patch does address two of the cons here. It has one more CB output, and we can upload the code all within the front panel. Other additional features include quad audio, MIDI ins and outs, OLED, and encoder. So what's the final verdict, even though this video is more of an overview rather than a review? Well, I set myself a goal, which was to make my modular rig fun to perform on its own, and patching it helped me achieve that quickly. I'll definitely keep it in my rig, and I'm excited to continue experimenting with it for years to come. There will be more videos that will feature patch in it. Well, if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna head out for the performance.